the same thing. It's their home and everybody should, should look after their home and no one should say that my home is better than your home. In regards to the Gold Coast, and I just need to expand this because I came down early last night because I wanted to feel from the people. I wanted to catch a couple of taxis. I wanted to talk to people. And everybody, not one person wanted to tell me how good the Gold Coast was. They wanted to tell me about the crime. They wanted to tell me about the drugs, the break and injury. And there's your problem. Your government can throw as much money as you can in the Gold Coast. And I always just remember that you can, you can keep giving people fish or you can teach them to fish. What we've got to do at the Gold Coast it's actually about the people here. Everybody's got to share the responsibility. The first thing I did in Ipswich, because I had the same perception problems, what I did was create a sense of pride in the community where people love their own city, and that didn't happen. I then created partnerships, and that's one thing the Gold Coast is notorious about, because I had the ULGA, the Gold Coast didn't want to join my organisation. Now that organisation, I can tell you, is now just won a Founders Award. In the, You've got to work with people and share. You've got to get out there and help other communities. I love going out to help other communities. I think in a couple of weeks I'm in Cairns, I'm all over the place. Because I've been doing economic development for 30 years. And I just love it, it's in my blood. The people get up the development industry. I noticed in the Sunday Mail they said, will you take money from a developer? I said, yes. Mate, they give to churches, they don't expect divine intervention, I'm telling you. You've got to make sure that the development industry, no, let me finish, because they're the start of the food chain. Without development industries, there's no consultants, there's no plumbers, there's no electricians, no white goods sales, and the rest goes on and on. But the question... That's about the jobs. You will not have jobs. But, but the question, your image of the Gold Coast... The from outside image, my image of the Gold Coast, you it's a fantastic... I went for a walk this morning. It was my own personal image. My image is not reflected by the people who live here. What you've got to do is get the people of the Gold Coast to love their own city and tell people how great it is. And until you achieve that, forget about all the money and stop building the government, because I work with the government and I work with whoever the Premier is and the government or the Prime Minister. That's what you've got to do. Do you work more, do you think, with the, the state government than the Gold Coast City Council does? Yeah, mate, I, when, I, when you saw that, I saw a paper, a headline paper when they made an announcement you're going to get light rail, you're going to get a rail down the middle and you, you're standing there saying you don't want it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, give it to me. Uh, 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 where's Councillor Petty? I'll take Councilor. it. Councillor Peter Young, yeah, just respond there. Could the Gold Coast City Council work more closely with the state government? Does there need to be probably a, a better relationship there? Absolutely. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities that are passing by this city. Um, I recall the day that the state government announced that the Common, Commonwealth Games bid, that they were going to back this with a tune of $10 million initially and p potentially hundreds of millions of dollars being spent in the city. On the very same day, our mayor was making headlines saying state government is irrelevant, we should do away with it. This does not help. You know, I can imagine in cabinet they must be going, well, here's a really good idea, let's just sideline the Gold Coast and go to Townsville with that. The um, relationship is very, very poor. It uh, requires a lot of fundamental work. It's very difficult in the current circumstances. Councillor Eddie Saroff, would you agree with, with your colleague's view there? Yeah, I, I agree that we've got a good habit of poking these guys in the eye with one hand and with the other hand asking for some dollars. And so what do you need to do to well, change Well, what that? we need to do is, uh, is really sit down with the government and show them that, first of all, we, we uh, value some of these projects. The light rail is uh, one of those concepts. I know, I know some of my colleagues in council were standing up the other day saying, you know, this is a, a project that won't resolve or fix the transport problems within the city, instead of talking about how this system will integrate with the current uh, bus service and, and all that. So we, we need to, first of all, believe in those projects, then we need to go to the government and look to further those projects to get the next stage of the light rail and the other infrastructure that's needed within the city. OK, can I go back to Michael Arnold? You, you've got a smile on your face. What are you thinking right now? I was just waving at Pam, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, look, absolutely, we need, to, we, need, you know, we need positivity, clearly. I was born on the Gold Coast, I love the place. Um, there was 38,000 people here when I was born, and there's 560, is it now? Um, you know, it's just a superb place, we need confidence here. All right, Michael Arnold says it's a superb place. Lindsay Wallace, you're from Gold Coast Tourism. Superb place, why is tourism falling and you've been given $83 million, I think, in the state budget. Well, how much of that have you got your, your foot on? What, what, what are you going to ask for? 
Uh, Madonna, but tourism is falling uh, for a range of reasons. Um, most commonly, the high Australian dollar, uh, the um, hangover impacts of the GFC and poor consumer confidence. Um, holidays are a discretionary item and um, today you know, the Gold Coast is lucky because we have um, got a very robust um, tourism infrastructure, um, albeit that some parts of it are ageing and, um, and do need redevelopment. Um, but certainly uh, the event stimulus package is welcomed for Events Queensland and Gold Coast Tourism uh, works strongly with, both of, with that organisation. We secure around about 75% of the funds um, coming through there. So it's, it's really imperative for the but region. But are you saying they're all economic drivers, that, that the perception of crime or, or, or nothing else is playing a role in no, people not coming? Certainly um, the recent... Um, you know, all of the recent coverage um, does nothing to enhance the city's uh, reputation. Um, I think it is in keeping it in perspective um, and also um, focusing on many of the, the good stories and the positive stories that, um, that visitors have, the experiences that they enjoy in the region. Apart from the, the global financial crisis or the aftermath of that, the discretionary spending, what is the one thing that you think could be done that would kickstart tourism on the Gold Coast? Uh, tax breaks for operators, a reduction in payroll tax. How hard did you think about the payroll tax issue, Andrew Fraser, going into the budget? It, your, your colleagues are putting a lot of emphasis on, on wanting to do something with payroll tax or your, the opposition. Uh, well, I think that they said um, that they would like to do that, but they're not going to do that. So I don't know they've put a lot of emphasis on it. Um, that's kind of like being on a promise, I suppose. Uh, ultimately, let's be clear about the payroll tax arrangements in Queensland. It's the lowest rate in the nation. It's the highest threshold in mainland Australia. And of course, if there's opportunity to address that into the future, then any government would. But I don't think at the moment um, the challenge in tourism uh, is unique uh, across the economy. And in fact, the challenge for us is to revitalise the product. And that's why the, the money has gone directly into tourism. Um, the, the equivalent amount of money spread across the whole economy in payroll tax would be 0, 0.0 nothing. So I think the government's policy intervention is, uh, is much more targeted to support tourism as opposed to going to payroll tax. All right, Paul Bidwell, uh, to you from the Master Builders. Has it become a risky investment strategy to include the Gold Coast in a, in a portfolio? The, the market here appears more volatile. Uh, the heart and soul of the place, tourism, has taken a hit. And some people are now questioning, you just read the letters to the editor, questioning whether it is a safe place to retire. Um, when you say safe place to retire, but do you mean financially or from... Uh, I think in probably both ways. The, well, I'll deal particularly with the financial side of things. Um, you know, our sense is that the Gold Coast, well, Gold Coast comes, comes on first and, is, and, and crashes first. That's one of the, the issues with the, with the place from a building and construction perspective. Um, we believe that it, 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 will, it will get better, and I think it is in the time frame that was been talked about this morning. And the $10,000 boost that the Treasurer announced uh, last week is, is going to help, we believe. Uh, there are some issues with the timing of that, and uh, that's an issue that, you know, that's in the margin, uh, and there are a number of parties that are talking to the government about maybe getting some changes there. But um, you know, ultimately, the, the, the Gold Coast is a great place to invest, uh, and is never, never a better time to buy. Bob Jansen, where are you? Can, you? can you just come in there? Most of my members, as you know, are in, in small business and consequently a lot of the problems we're facing is a connection with council. Try to remember the fact that being a small business city and the, the small business leader in the, in the country, in actual fact, we create, help create the economy. It comes from business. And there is a vast difference between the business sector and government or the bureaucracy. So what we're saying, we need a better connection with bureaucracy. They control the economy through compliance, through taxes, through levies. And there is a lack of understanding of what business needs between council, between state government, between the federal government and business. This has to change. There have to be some cultural changes. All right, so what changes are you talking about? What are three things you would like to see done? OK, well, as Paul pointed out, uh, one of the major problems in the construction industry, for instance, is the fact of the high infrastructure charges. Now, I know we've dealt with some of that, and having seen the results of that, quite frankly, the small business community thinks it's not enough. We need to stimulate that. I'm the builder myself. I've had one inquiry in eight months. One. 
I actually was able to cross the Ross Street Bridge today because all the, all the tradies are going north. That's a serious situation. OK, can I um, just jump, and we'll go back to infrastructure charges and time approvals in, in just a moment. Can I jump to, to Don Jones, CEO of Marine Queensland? What do you think should be done? What do you think should be done for the spit, for example? Well, uh, marine, marine developments have their own particular challenges, and, uh, and, and I think you know, there's been a lot of focus on the spit, but I don't think it's just only the spit. You know, from our perspective, I think um, you, know, you look at the, the whole of the area, the, the whole of the Broadwater, for example, and uh, look at the opportunities there. I, I think in one sense, um, you know, there's, there's probably been a little bit too much emphasis on that, that piece of land, and I think we need to take a broader view. So what would you like to see done? Well, we, we've been actively uh, engaged in the conversation with, uh, with both council and, and the state uh, regarding um, uh, some additional planning and projects for the, uh, the Broadwater. Uh, our view is, is that uh, the future is probably more about cross-sector synergies, so uh, greater synergies between marine, uh, tourism, transport, and, and I guess even from this city's perspective, looking at how we get a uh, piece of the action uh, from those sectors of the economy which are firing. All right, talking about pieces of the action, to, to Paul Burton, you're a Professor of Urban Management and Planning at, at Griffith University. Is this actually a, an opportunity here in, in some ways to plan what we're doing, to get the council, local business, that massive community support we saw a, a couple of weeks ago over Damien Leading, to work together to develop a plan for the next 18 months? Um, abs absolutely, and I, I, I think we shouldn't believe that there has been no planning. I've been encouraged since I moved here four years ago by the willingness of all sectors, people from all sectors, to start thinking long term. Clearly there are short term obstacles and hurdles we've got to get over, but it's about looking 20, 30 years hence. And the bold future process that Council initiated, it's had some critics, but I think it's it's symptomatic of an inclination to look forward, and that's good. But, but, but it's a bit hard for a developer sitting in this room to be looking 20, 30 years ahead when they want to make sure that they're making a profit in 12 months' time. Is, it, is there a little step, do you think, as a community, that people in this room can band together as a first step to creating you know, that plan forward? Well I, well, I think one of the things that we recommended in the Bold Future Outcomes was some new relationships between council, the business sector, mm -hmm. the community sector. And I personally, drawing on my experience in the UK, would like to see something resembling what are called local strategic partnerships, where you have a more formal relationship between the council, not just the council here, but at state and commonwealth level. Um, the organised business interests, like the UDIA, but, but the also, also the organised community sector, to tap into and harness the talent and the views and the opinions and the energy of the people who live here. Uh, Madonna, can I just comment on that? Yes, yeah, sure. That's really important because that's spot on. That's exactly what's needed because, um, you know, we are what people perceive us to be, not what we think we are. We all love the Gold Coast. There's no doubt in my mind we wouldn't be here. But I can tell you, the Ipswich had the highest unemployment and the highest um, crime rate in the country over 20 years ago. And we got off our butts and did something about it. And can I just say, when you say did something about it, we're talking about strategic partnerships. But one yep. thing you have done in Ipswich is the people in Ipswich really hate. If there is someone called the talk back line yep. and put Ipswich down... They will just ring on mass. That's right, we and that, saw, that wasn't like that 20 years ago. No, and we saw on and the I, Gold I just Coast to tell you that how same we did that. community support, that caring yep. support. I wonder, what about if you had, instead of selling the Gold Coast to Melbourne or Sydney, what what would it be like to have a local Gold Coast tourism campaign selling yep. Gold Coast to the people here? Yeah, no, there's no problem with that. But the thing about it is that what we did with Ipswich is bring everybody together. You need you need the. As the mayor, and I'll use my, and I won't compare the different roles, but you've got to get out there and, like, I go to the tax industry every six months and I bring them together and tell them what's happening. I go to all the church leaders. I've got the Chamber of Commerce, the UDIA, which I sponsor. I work with all the community. Everybody's got a shared vision. We all know where we're heading. Down the Gold Coast, everybody's working separately because no one, there's no champion to bring people together. So what is the one concrete step you would do today to start that? I would start getting everybody working together. Know what you want to do and then go sell your message to the people that live here. Who what, sells the, that message? Is it the mayor's job or is it a, a special group of business? Well, I do it in Ipswich. You can choose who you want to do it here. Because I can tell you, I, I don't get along with the mayor down here because he's always having to go at Ipswich. But at, at the end of the day, you, you shouldn't do that because that just puts your own city down.
And there's a lot of Ipswich people that invest here, a lot of people that live here, and a lot of Ipswich people go on holidays here. So why would you bag a city that is investing in your city? Mm. That's just stupid. So, Lindsay Wallace, over to you. Is there, is there an argument for that, to do something locally, to, to increase that patriotism, that, that pride in living in, on the Gold Coast? Oh, certainly. And um, within our membership,